Hey, it's Joel. We're in Erie, Colorado, spring break capital of the world with my buddy Sterling. Hey, hey man. How you doing? Good to see you again. It's good to see you. And we are about to show you something that McLaren might not want you to see. It is this. A 3D printed McLaren. A 3D partially. printed. A partially 3D printed McLaren. Now, your first start, of course, was the episode about the Lamborghini, and people loved that. But you've learned a lot since then. Yes, sir. And you've, you've, you've gained some knowledge. You've changed some processes. And I think it would be really great to kind of go over this and talk about how you approach this car different from the Lamborghini. So the Lamborghini, as you know, was built from scratch. The, right. You built the frame, right. frame the body, everything. body, everything. This was a departure from that. This was... Let's start with something that actually exists first, and okay. then we can go from there. Can we, can we restore something rather than build it from scratch? Now, when we talk about someone who might restore cars, usually there's a certain amount of the original car that should exist. So how right. much of the original McLaren existed here? So McLaren builds their cars in a very cool way. They make an entire, what, we, what they call a carbon fiber tub. And that is the crash structure and everything that goes with the car. The tub actually only weighs 80 kilos. That's nothing. We actually were able to lift it off the truck <laughs> when it arrived with four of us. That's amazing. Yeah. And you didn't even break a sweat when you did it. Well, maybe a little. <laughs> so you had the tub, right? Did you have a front end? No. No. Did you have a back end? Uh, sort of. Okay. I mean, I see McLaren parts here. Right. That quarter panel came with the car. Okay. It's a little damaged, but I can save it. This one did not. The one that was there was obliterated. Obliterated meaning? Destroyed completely. Because oh. the car was actually in a wreck. Oh. I'm the only one I know of who's using exclusively 3D printing for bringing these cars back from their crash state. Well, you're, you're the coolest one, well, obviously. Thank you. Before, when you had your Lamborghini project and you spent so much time doing it, I remember you had a single 3D printer, a CR10, and then you acquired uh, a Chidi yep. machine, and then that did some of the ASA parts. But but right. now, like you're working with Creality for all of the parts that are on this. That's correct. correct. So what are you running now? So I'm running a Creality K1 Max, and I'm also running a Creality Sermoon D3. Oh, both large format. Yes. And both machines that actually go quite a bit faster than that old CR10. Three CR times faster. And both are enclosed. Correct, so, which is important. Well, then is, is there PLA here, or is this all ASA? No, that was the problem with the Aventador, was the PLA. Um, I had some adhesion problems with the carbon fiber with the PLA. So then your PLA had a covering of carbon fiber. Correct. The epoxy did not adhere as well as I had hoped. I see. While it looked like it adhered, when you do the thermal cycling of the day and the night and the winter and summer, it started to crack. Now for the ASA parts, I, I see there's some attachment methods here and this looks really familiar. It's one of those plastic welder kind of not really things? a plastic welder because that's actually a different thing it's kind of like a, a soldering iron with the, that has a big flat okay, tip okay. on it so these joiners um what they do and the reason i've been using them is i've been getting some cracks in the asa as i put it on and i put it under a lot of stress trying <laughs> to get the panels where i want them and so also i have to cut things to try to get it to fit and conform to the car my model's good but it's not perfect. Those are the types of adjustments that I have to make because I'm starting with an actual car. That's the point that still is boggling my mind because I, I feel like this is level two of what you're doing because creating it from scratch means you control all of the dimensions, everything that you're doing, and, and you, should, you should be able to adhere a body onto a subframe that you've made easier. But with this one, you're having to adapt to a real car or at least parts of a real car, how much force are you having to put on these parts in order to make them bend to your will? The difference between this and the Aventador, the major difference, the Aventador was probably at this point three years into the build. I'm six months into this build. Six months! And I'm still working on the Aventador. Sterling, that's fantastic. Now let me give you a really good example of why this is important. Okay. Look at this A-pillar here, okay? This is a this is an aluminum A pillar, and this is from the car. And this, this is this is a this McLaren is glued to the tub. Okay. Okay. 
It's a McLaren A-pillar. I scanned it because the A-pillar on the other side was destroyed. And so I scanned it, I mirrored it in CAD, 3D printed it, scanned it in carbon fiber, and now I have a really strong carbon fiber A-pillar on the other side. How easy was it to mount in place over there? It was right on the money. Right yes, on the money. dude, I love hearing that. I love hearing that because for everybody out there who's watching this and, and the previous episode that we did with uh, the Lamborghini, like getting that inspiration for wanting to do this and to hear that doing it again, but in a better way and, and being in, have a part of the car that you can scan and mirror, that's important to know. Yeah, and that was one of the key features when Creality sent me their um, scanner, uh, it's the Scan Ferret. It's a relatively you know, inexpensive scanner. So I did my first scan on the Aventador. I printed something. I was printing a chin spoiler for the Aventador. Okay. So I scanned my the front end so I could get all the parts right to fit to it. It fit the first time, not the fourth or the fifth. Oh, that's amazing. And that's the thing I was going through with the Aventador was having to print a part, try it out. Eh, it doesn't quite fit. You know, redesign it, reprint it out. And so there was a lot of time wasted doing that. There was one thing I remember not that long ago you told me about, and I want to demonstrate it by opening this door. Is that the okay? The doors. Yeah, the yeah. doors, the doors. Okay, Please so do it. pull here, mm -hmm. and then Sterling, that's flawless. What did you do that's different from the Aventador? Because the Aventador required a little It required convincing. multiple different tries at getting a good hinge right yeah because as you can see this door is very similar it opens out and up mm -hmm. right so these doors are called kind of called butterfly doors instead of scissor doors okay the thing that made this easier was i actually was able to afford real mclaren hinges <laughs> okay but the the action on these doors is just yeah oh that is now a that's nice. I don't want to give you a false sense. This was not easy. I spent a lot no, of time on no, these doors. No, no, no. But nowhere near the amount of time I spent on the Aventador. In the Aventador, you were reinventing a wheel. Yes. And on this one, someone gave you gave me the a wheel. wheel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sterling on the front end here. I, I see a mix of things and this is this didn't exist before, right? Correct. So there's there's metal under here supporting this that you added. Right. But these are 3D printed ASA parts and I see Wood screws. Drywall screws. Drywall screws. I use them for everything as well. I would imagine these are temporary. Yes, they are. Okay, just to kind of hold things in place. That's correct. And you've got a lot of the plastic joiners that yep. I see, which are super handy. I would imagine you go through things They're, like crazy. I, I do because I'm really rough with these prints. I mean, I'm stretching them. I'm pulling them. I'm trying to make them all fit. I hit them with the heat gun and they get all stressed out. So... So ABS glue with ASA, I, yes. I, it makes sense that it works, but- Yeah, they're the same basic plastic. It works well. It works very well. It actually fuses the parts together. Oh, that's right, at a chemical level, right? Yes. So here, I want to get everything working. Like you just saw the doors working, right? Oh, working well. Working very well. Very I've well. spent a lot of time on getting the little details on those. And I'm going to do that with all the panels on the car. And then once that's done, I'm going to body work all the panels on the car to get them to fit good. Oh. And then I will start skinning the parts. Okay. Hot diggity. That's a great idea. I hope so. <laughs> well, it seems like it's an upgrade from the process, from the Aventador. That's correct. But a proper upgrade, like different material, different adhesion method, different workflow even, right. just from everything you learned before. Correct. Yeah. And, and since I got to prove that out with some of the trim pieces on the Aventador, I'm pretty confident that that's going to go okay here. This is the A-pillar that is the the created one, the printed one. Right. And obviously 3D printed in ASA and you've you've wrapped it in carbon fiber, but it is like yeah. That's strong. Right. That is surprisingly strong and it's not the it's not the drywall screws that are providing the strength, it's no. the carbon fiber. It's the carbon fiber and then there's also panel adhesive behind it. And that's what these two pieces of carbon fiber, 3D printed carbon fiber parts are bonded together with and then they're bonded to the carbon fiber tub as well. Being able to bond the two carbon fiber parts together, providing the ultimate strength, right? right? Because that's, oh, is this, okay, how many layers of carbon fiber is this? Two on each side, that's it. 
the modulus of a, of, a, of a part, of a metal, right, gives you that ting. Right. I think, I think it's the modulus, correct me if I'm wrong. But this, it doesn't have so much, a little yeah. bit. It's got a little bit. And tell me that wouldn't be a good car panel. This would be amazing as a car panel. It's so light. I knew this was strong. I didn't realize, like, it's, it's, it's a metal strong. Right. Wow. Well, this is really cool. And one of the things that I, I really love about this is it shows off how 3D printing is a fantastic material for this as a substrate. Correct. Now, now the Aventador has some bare printed panels with some carbon fiber on it, and I, I, I knew they were gonna be strong, but they, it never occurred to me that it was this strong. And now with ASA material and that panel adhesive and the carbon fiber bonded to the carbon fiber tub, that's legit. That right. is that is a legit car part right there. I want you to show the audience something. Bring it up a little closer here. Sterling showed me this earlier. Now this was originally a coupe, right? Okay, lift it up. It is now a hard top convertible. This is one of the coolest things about what you're doing, at least th that I feel, is that this was originally a coupe. And you were like, nah, I want a hard top convertible. And so you just did it. Right. Because you can. So. This isn't printed. No. This is actually a hard top convertible McLaren piece. Right. And do you just go to a wrecking yard or a breaker to get that? I saw it when I bought the tub and I knew the tub was a coupe and I didn't really want a, a coupe, but it was the right tub to buy. And uh, it turns out that the mounting pieces, because they make the tubs for both the, uh, what they call the spider version and the coupe, right? Uh, they make the mounting pieces on both tubs. It's oh, the same like tub. The tub can be used for either. Yeah, okay. that's right. Okay. And so this mounted, bolted directly to it. Just like yeah. that. So I just cut the <laughs> roof off and put this on. I mean, you're building out the rest of the car. Why not make it exactly the car you want? Yeah. One of the things that I want Sterling to really talk about is the brakes. They're not 3D printed because that would be terrible, but they are six. There's uh, six calipers here. And, and what type of material is the brake? It's carbon ceramic. Carbon ceramic! Carbon ceramic. Why is that important for high performance sports cars? Carbon ceramic is important because it, it uh, eliminates a thing called brake fade. So when you have uh, steel or iron rotors, when you're using your brakes a lot, they get hot. Mm -hmm. When they get hot, they create gases between the brake pads and the rotor. Those gases prevent oh. the friction from being high enough to slow the car down. Ceramics we've talked about before on the show, and you know they can withstand high, high amounts of heat. And adding carbon fiber to the mix, is that to, to take some of the weight out of the ceramic? They take silicon and they force it into the matrix of the carbon fiber. And it forms a uh, ceramic called silicon carbide, which is very, very tough. So if you look at it, yeah, they're more expensive, but I don't have to replace my rotors all the time. That's really cool. Right. So the calipers are six piston calipers um, all around, and those are just really nice calipers. These are AP racing calipers, and I got them again from a breaker's yard. So then not a brand new cost, but, Correct. but a lower cost. Right. But still, I mean, look nice. Yeah. And they're going to be, uh, they're going to be powder coated yellow. <sighs> Because I'm going to so do good. purple for the car. Purple and yellow with yeah. the yellow for the accents. It's going to look good. Yeah. There's one more piece I want to see. It's on the back. Yeah. Let's go see. This last part, I really, can I pick it up? Yeah. Right here? Of course. Look at this. So this is an engine cover. Right. And what comes out here? The exhaust. The exhaust. The exhaust. Now, Sterling, as everybody out there knows, if you add really hot exhaust to plastic, typically things melt. Yeah, that's not good. So how do you mitigate that in a supercar? So what we'll probably do is we'll probably line this with a ceramic and have the metal tubes come up through that ceramic. The ceramic will isolate this part. Now this part is going to get covered in carbon fiber just like the other one. So that'll help give it its strength and give okay. it some uh, ability to resist heat. Well, so I'm wondering, carbon fiber actually adds to the material's ability right. to resist yeah. heat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've showed that in some of my videos. We'll put a, car, a ceramic piece in here uh, that's round the tube so that we don't have that problem. How cool is this? Exhaust coming out of the engine cover, I mean. That's right? kind of cool. Are there gonna be flames? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, now that I can see it though, is that a McLaren engine in there? That is absolutely not a McLaren engine. No. They're okay. very expensive, even on the breakers market. Oh, really? Right. And so um, they're also very uh, expensive to maintain. But they're oh. good engines. You know, okay. they're okay. supercar engines. Yeah, yeah. But with both of those and me, and I'm a cheap, you know, <laughs> what? Um, efficient, Sterling. <laughs> efficient. efficient, yes. Yes. Um, so what I did was I got a modern engine out of a C8 Corvette, a 2023. Really? With the drivetrain, the transaxle that comes with it, because the C8, as they transition from the C7 to the C8, they move the engine to the middle of the car. So it's a mid-engine car. Oh, so it's great that you got both of those pieces. Because I can drop it right in. Because you can drop it right in. Right. To get a 2023 C8 Corvette engine, you would have to buy it brand new. Or get it, you got it from a breaker, you said. I got it from a breaker. Meaning someone had a car or part of a car and took parts out of it. So it is a used engine. Correct. Okay. It looks like it's in really good condition. It has four miles on it. <laughs> what? Yeah. When they were delivering the car to the dealership, the car got dropped off the trailer <laughs> and they broke the frame. And when you break a frame like that, the insurance company usually totals the car out and it goes to a breaker's yard. Oh, oh, so if it's totaled, it's, it's totaled and yeah. it gets parted out, yeah. even though it's brand new. Right. Wow. So I still have to break it in. <laughs> <laughs> How appropriate. I know the joy that you have in, in building not just the Aventador, but in this McLaren and how you're customizing it. You wanna make it your daily driver and, and you've got these new techniques that you're using to put it all together. Yeah. You're building yourself a brand new car. Effectively. Oh, I love it. Well, Sterling, obviously this is six months of work. Next time we see you, this is probably gonna be fully built. The Aventador will be a different color and you'll be on your third car, whatever that is. Maybe. 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 <laughs> but for everybody out there that's interested in this project, where can they go to find out more? So I have a YouTube channel that documents this and the Aventador build. It's Laser Sterling. So YouTube just go to you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so just go to YouTube and uh, look me up. Well, I'll put a link down in the description as well. Great. That's what I do for awesome. friends. Yeah. Well, if you made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in. Build all the cars. <laughs> and as always. High five. You want one? Yeah. Whoa. Crisp.